Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dan Derry, and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to Answers on Eschatology. We're going to pick up in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 again today, and I want to uh, begin looking at the end of the age. Now, this is admittedly a huge topic. Um, we'll spend some time here. Not going to spend as long as I would like, probably, uh, just because the size of the, the study we're already doing. But uh, we've got some good stuff to say about the end of the age. And uh, so let's dig in and take a look at some things. So first thing I want to ask you guys is what age were the, were the disciples referring to when they asked him, what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Now, remember, they are connecting the coming of the Lord and the end of the age with the destruction of Jerusalem. But the coming of the Lord is, in fact, the end of the age. Listen to the question again, how it's, how it's worded. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So the end of the age is, is connected to the coming of the Lord. What is the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Are you with me, guys? They're not two different things. The end of the age would bring about the coming of the Lord. And when the Lord would come, it would be at the end of the age, in the end of the age, and to consummate the end of the age. Are you with me? Okay. Now... Question, what age were the disciples referring to? Because this whole chapter revolves around the coming of the Lord at the end of the age to destroy Jerusalem. Many would say that, well, look guys, the disciples were thinking about the end of the Christian age. Well, we will see that that is very untenable. That's, that's not a good position. To, be, to, to say it kindly. But I submit to you that the end of the age was the end of the age in which they were living. And the age in which the temple and old covenant in Jerusalem represented. Are you with me, guys? Listen, Jesus prophesies the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, and they say, what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? See, that temple and that city of Jerusalem at that time and for hundreds of years represented their world, their age, if you will. The dispensation in which God was dealing with them through the law of Moses. And the end, the destruction of that temple would mark the end of that age, the end of that era, where God would, would then deal with his people through a new way, through a living way, in a new temple, with a new priesthood. Are you with me, guys? And a spiritually renewed people. So, what I want to do in this study is I want to look at a couple scriptures which help us understand why the disciples would have connected and understood the destruction of Jerusalem to be the end of their age, the old covenant age in which they <laughs> lived and breathed and died, most of them. Now, go with me to Mark chapter 10. Watch this. Mark 10 and 30. Okay, Jesus said, 29 and 30. Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or mother or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the gospel's sake, but that he will receive a hundred times as much now in th the present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. Now ask yourself, when Jesus said this present age, what age was he talking about? <laughs> the age of the age of law, the age of Moses, the old covenant age, and in the age to come, eternal life. 
what would be the age to come? The kingdom age, <laughs> right? Okay, let's go with uh, Matthew chapter 12. Let's take a look at a parallel text, essentially. Matthew chapter 12 and 32. Uh, uh, 31 and 32. Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or the age to come. See, what age was Jesus standing in, living in, when he said this age? Old covenant age, right? The age of law. This is the age that the disciples identified with the destruction of Jerusalem. <laughs> That temple represented the age of Moses, the age of law, the age pre the age to come, pre kingdom age, pre age of Messiah, whatever you want to call it, pre Christian age. That is where we dwell now. We dwell in the age that was about to come at that time. Okay, guys? So I want to keep this video really simple. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stop here, but please understand according to Jesus' doctrine, and first century Hebrew thought, there was only two ages to come, that is, okay? The age they were in, this age, and the age to come. Two ages, the one they lived in, the one they breathed in, and the age they were waiting on, which would bring eternal life, which would bring their kingdom. Are you with me, guys? So listen, Matthew chapter 24, 3, when, when the disciples say, Lord, what would be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They understood that he, was, uh, that he would come in judgment, in vindication, at the end of the Old Covenant age. And that would establish the kingdom of God. So, we'll look at more guys next time on Answers on Eschatology. Bye for now.